Hey everyone, it's Austin and welcome back to day 87 on my journey to 2000. I'll be playing chess every single day until I reach the goal. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join the Discord, and let's get into today's game. Scene swap, tunes on, and into the 10 minute pool we go. Got a freaking boom arm for my mic today. Got the capture card so I can use my video camera at full 1080p 60 frames. Feeling saucy. Um, I'm playing against an 1800 for the first time ever. So um, to be frank, I'm terrified. Um, the screen seems very blurry to me right now. This is a big blunder. Because now I have this saucy, saucy position. <laughs> Things are looking up for me. My main man, Airwing Marine, dropping new tunes. Okay, so let's think about this here. If I take... I'm not really doing a whole lot, right? I'm not actually accomplishing a whole lot. If I push... Then I'm winning a pawn. Because he can't take... With either piece without having to... If he takes with either piece, I recapture with the pawn and I'm up a piece. For two pawns. With pressure still mounting on the queen side. So I think pushing is the correct move here. If he slides the bishop back. Um, I think let's do this. Hmm. Hmm. Still not loving it. Feel like something's not right. I'm definitely screwing something up here. Ah, uh, I just like can't even think straight, man. Suck fast. I saw that move as soon as I played. The move that I played. So let's just go here and uh, eat our mistakes. We can still go here and castle. Bishop can rock back here. Actually, what's a really good idea is going this way. I wish I thought of that. Stupid. Now he can take that pawn. Or he can do that. Yeah. I'm definitely a little bit upset with myself right now. Um, let's go ahead and take this pawn. Um, let's go here. I mean, this is the only logical move, right? Opponent should probably play something like this. I'm going to step my king up. I feel like that was a bad move again by him. Not sure what uh, angle he's after here. Because now he can't swing over with his rook. His king isn't defending that square. Um, let's take this square away from the king. Pretty simple moves so far. I'm going to be threatening here next. To cut the king off first. Okay. <laughs> 
I'm actually thinking pawn takes is best here. What's not? Oh man, I don't know. No, pawn takes is better to go here, I think. Um, let's go here. not really feeling like I want to trade a ton of pieces. Kind of feel like this is the move to try to break it up even more. If I go here, 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 takes, takes, I'm not loving that, I feel like this is kind of a logical move, now that he's abandoned that side of things, I kind of think I want to just play defensively over here, and now set up this rook trade which may yield um, devastating consequences on the second rank. Again, I'm um, kind of sleepy, not really calculating anything, just playing intuitively, which is never really a good way to be. I mean, surely this has to be the correct idea. Oh man, now I'm kind of thinking about this. Let's just go here. I have a lot of my important squares covered here, so I'm feeling comfy. Um, Bishop's going here on the next move. Okay. Unless that happens. Now I'm kind of thinking about hitting him with the old wraparound. Um... Let's just fall back just one square. I definitely don't think that I want to be overzealous with my uh, peace trades. Okay, so he's going to it. He's attacking this pawn right now, right? Okay, so let's defend it. Let's play simple chess. Oof. I think I want to go this way. From here, where is he going to go? Nowhere that looks that dangerous. I think I do need to move my king over. I do. All right, yeah, I like that move by him. Let's go here. I'm literally going to try to infiltrate on the third rank. I have no moves on this other side of the board. So I'm just gonna basically ignore it. Okay. I 
Let's go here. Here, here, here. Takes here. If king up. Takes here, check. Rook back, rook takes here, and I feel like I have to be promoting. Um, if I go here, here, I'm just kept, I'm just double checking here. He has no checks. She's probably gonna take. Now I give this check. Um, yeah, I feel like that checks out. Infiltrating the second rank here. He has this check, but again, I, I think I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, that was a smart move. Obviously, uh, did not see that move. This should be my idea now, I think. I don't know, though. I'm not freaking calculating anything, and I probably should be. Can't stop touching my beard. I trust the calculation, and if I calculate it bad, then I lose, and whatever. Who cares? Oh man, I feel like I should have some sort of sacrifice here. You know what I mean? Sacrifice to promote this pawn. So let's think about this logistically. If I give this check, which check is better? I don't think either checks are very good. So let's just give this one because I'm running out of time. Right. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And let's go over here. This sucks. I don't want to draw this game. Should I play for a win? He obviously is very comfortable with the draw. Hmm. Hmm, I don't know, man. I'm just not seeing it. I think I'm going to sack my bishop. That's what I think I'm going to do. And just say that I don't care if I lose. I think that that's what I'm going to do. Because this has been a very interesting game that I look forward to learning a lot from in the analysis. Um, I feel very comfortable that I have a better position against an 1800 right now. Even if I don't know how to win, I'll learn how to win. And the next time that I have something like this, um, you know, we're going to try to win. So let's go here. To box the king out, hopefully. And now he's kind of stuck though, right? So this might be better than what I was thinking about with sacrificing the bishop. Um, let's take that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's uh, promote our pawn. 
his knight is stuck to defending this or not. So I guess he's banking on me not having enough time. But, you know, I've been, I've tried to be dirty flagged plenty of times in this uh, messed up world that we have here. And, you know, I don't think that I really want to be dirty flagged. And this is a check, so I can do this. Um, and now I think what I want to do is probably just this. And I'm going to move up away from my pieces. So hopefully I don't get forked because I'm not calculating anything because I don't have time to calculate things. And I'm literally shaking right now, guys. I'm I'm literally shaking. Um, huh. Okay. This guy's tricky. But I think I may have him boxed in now. Wow, I'm shaking. <sighs> Highest defeated opponent, 1822. Oh. Holy smokes, guys. Oh, he was winning at some point. That's a shame. I mean, I knew that I had something, I just, I, I hardly ever play positions like this. Yeah, see, like, I just, I just had the wrong plan. I committed too much to kingside stuff when I should have been doing queenside stuff. So let, let's, we're at a level now. We, we have to dig deeper. We have to, have to, have to dig deeper. So E6, uh, castles is the best move. Now, B5. Guys, I can't stop freaking shaking right now. Um, B5, Rook, C1. Bishop, D7. Okay. Not seeing it. Now, A3. Now B4, because I can sacrifice like a million pieces on this square. C takes, and probably, let's try to think about what the best move is going to be. I'm not looking at the evaluation. I'm not looking at the evaluation. I think that, I think that knight takes is the best move. Nope, it's bishop takes. Damn it. <laughs> that sucks. Okay, so knight takes is not the best move because knight e5, I relinquish, it relinquishes control of knight e5, and now he's going to take this, so bishop b5 is necessary to keep it and monitor, okay. Sometimes the top lines on the side say something different. Play e4. And when he goes here, he also controls this square, which is important to note. Um, it's so funny that I'm just like leaving my knight here. Now bishop b5. And it's still kind of unclear why that's worse than bishop takes. But let's look at the top line. So now knight takes c4 is the best move. Wow. It's a move, but h3 is the best move. Let's analyze that, actually. D takes. Rook takes, obviously. Um, And now, what do we have here? Just bishop e7. Take your material and go, I guess. 
just to up a piece for two pawns. Rook back to c1 is nuts. Because this runs into this. And then even if you take, then you're kind of busted here. Uh, that should be kind of clear to you guys. And then the plans are pretty simple. You should be able to pile on that isolated pawn and just vibe out. But anyway, none of that happens. I made several mistakes in a row. So this is another mistake because knight h5 is better. Knight h5, bishop g3. I mean, are we taking? What are we doing? We're playing e6 and we're probably just going to proceed with b5, b4. So knight e5 was a great move by him. I mean, it's just so silly. Um, my best move in this position... What about taking? Because I was thinking about taking. Okay, it's also saying that that's best. So knight takes and now e6, I feel like is... e6 is a line, b5 right away is a line. Fair enough. But yeah, the bishop becomes a liability there. Which is why taking the knight is um, good. And yeah, just it's just screaming for b5. Yeah, and I mean, I, I really need to stop before each move and like think about what I want to do, man. Because I saw this move right after I played, like in one second, I snapped it right back. Oh, this is a blunder. This is a miss. Here, and then d7. King d7. Yeah, because you have to watch the check, right? Yeah, and like white just has all this pressure. Winning everything. Black doesn't have any material to try to formulate any kind of an attack. It makes perfect sense, but that didn't happen. He pushed, which I knew was wrong. And then I was just able to put together this monster attack. So... Rook g5 right away was better, which makes so much sense. Pawn takes was best. This check was good. That pawn break was good. Oh, okay. I didn't even see bishop there, but that makes so much sense as well. So, yeah, this was kind of a wasteful move. I was really banking on him taking, but obviously, like, why would he take? Bishop f4 is an idea that I expounded upon plenty of times in the game. Um, so it's just something that I should have played earlier. <laughs> so let's say he didn't do this. Let's say that he, I mean, he literally has no moves, actually. This is technically the best move. And then after my king goes here, I think that, no. Knight back to f5, begging for a draw. So in this situation, can I do this? This is the question. Because this is what I was going to do. This is completely winning for, for black. This is minus 4.7. That makes me really freaking happy, guys. That makes me, you have no idea how happy that makes me. B takes, rook takes probably just like no e7 check is better i would assume that he would play this now rook e1 covering the promotion and i would honestly probably interesting it wants this this is the best move i would probably do this Oops, sorry. Let's right click and delete that move. I would probably do this. Okay, this is still completely winning for black. That makes me so freaking happy that I saw this sacrifice. But then 
I knew that winning and I'll explain to you what I calculated here. I knew that winning an exchange was good. And then in this position, you'll notice I took four seconds. It's because I realized that it's almost like it's kind of like a deflection tactic where if I play this and the king has to recapture, obviously now I'm winning this pawn via skewer. And then the game kind of plays itself after that. And I just kind of had to be careful. I mean, like, even if that promotion wasn't check, I was still like, it's possible probably to still play it. Okay, I missed mate in one. Um, I was just like literally so nervous. Um, but yeah, the game kind of played itself. What I was going to say is you could easily give up the rook and just promote the queen in theory. Um, but at the same time, it's like, why would I do that? So I gained 10 rating points for that because he was um, almost a thousand points higher than me, which makes me feel really good. I, I feel very comfortable in these lines against the London. Um, it said I played like a 2050. Great opening, great end game. You guys can't see this because my new scene has it cut off, but... I played with a 86% accuracy. He played with a 78. Um, I just really like these lines against the London where you play Bishop D6 early. Um, you guys can't see the side, but I, we're already equalized here. This is minus 0.15. Uh, the reason that I like playing this so much against the London is because when I play the London, this is what I hate when people play against me. <laughs> so... This is already minus 1.6, and if I were a, like, what if I just played b5 right away here? I know I, seems like I revisit analysis a lot more often than I should. And if I played b4 here, I'm giving up a little bit of an advantage, but rook c1 is now the idea, and b takes c3, Pro, uh, rook takes c3, okay. I just don't understand the bishop d7 idea. I really don't. Now, he needs to sack a knight already because the pressure surmounting is just too great. Now, e6. Rook back. And when they finally play a3, you're already just up a piece for two pawns and you have this killer pawn over here that honestly is going to be kind of hard to hang on to so i don't know what the computer's idea here is but if i had to guess it has something to do with the fact that we're going to play on the in the center and on the queen side and his minor pieces here are disconnected and this bishop is just a sad boy just a genuine sad boy. Wow, so how long we've we been recording? This has been about 28 minutes. Um, I know that there's a line going through the freaking screen with this new recording. So I'll look into that. I'm gonna look into the fact that in the scene, the board seems very blurry. I, yeah, there's a lot of things to look into. What I said to myself in my test right before this recording was, it feels like when I fix one thing or upgrade one thing, two more minor things pop up that I need to mess with. So thank you guys for your patience as I'm figuring it out. Um, you know, I'm just one guy. I'm just an engineer that knows nothing about audio and video. And I'm learning a whole heck of a lot. So... Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for your support. Every comment helps. I read every comment. And I, I know who the regular suspects are. Know that you're appreciated very much. I look forward to reading the comments every single day. I live, um, I haven't mentioned this, but you know, I live on the East Coast of America. And a lot of my viewers are in, in the East, in Europe and Asia. And... So when you guys are awake, I'm asleep. So like my f first thing that I do in the morning, I look forward to it. As soon as I wake up, I grab my phone and I open YouTube 
because usually it's a couple comments or left overnight while I'm asleep and it's just something so exciting for me to look forward to overnight. So I uh, just want to tell you guys that, that means a lot to me. Um, so yeah, thank you for all your support again and I will see you tomorrow.